Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in this Jetpack Compose playlist in which we will actually take what we have learned in the previous videos and apply it to make something that just looks a little better than what we did so far. But nonetheless, you will still learn a lot of new stuff in this video, um, a lot of stuff that I didn't cover before, which is just important to actually make this component we want to make here, this composable. I already prepared this here in my emulator. We will make a simple image card to just display this image with a little text. And you can see that is um, important here that we have a little gradient from black towards transparent. So we can actually make sure we can always read the, the white text here. You can see that it has rounded corners. It has a little shadow. It has white text. So a lot of new stuff of, and modifications you will actually learn here. So I am in an empty Compose project here again, just as usual. And I also already included my image that I want to display here in my drawable folder. You can see Kermit.jpg. This is this Kermit in the snow picture. So just take whatever image you like and put it into this drawable folder so we can include it in our project later. And then in this video we won't start here in set content because we will create our own composable. So we will create a composable for that image card that is reusable. So we can just display multiple image cards if we like with different images, with different titles and stuff like that. So I will go below main activity and here I will create a composable function that we need to annotate with add composable. That will be a function and it's going to be called image card. And by the way, the naming convention for composable functions is that these start with a capital letter. So normal functions start with a lower letter and are written in camel case. But these composable functions are starting with a capital letter. That's important. And then we now need to think about which data do we actually need from the outside to display an individual image card. So. On the one hand, we of course need the image that we want to display. So we can have multiple cards and each card should have a different image. We want each card to have a different title, so the white text. Then we need what is called a content description for the image. Um, that is, for example, for screen readers. So in case somebody is blind and has a screen reader enabled, then this content description will be read instead of that person seeing that Im image, of course. And we will be able to pass a modifier from the outside to actually be able to modify this image card. So starting with the image, for that we need what is called a painter in a Jetpack Compose. Um, that will just be a normal painter here. You will see what that actually is. In our case, that, that will just allow us to um, use an image from our image resources um, to display that in our image card. And then we will have the content description, which will be of type string. We will have the title, which is of type string. So that will be the text that is displayed on the card. And we will have a modifier that we can pass here. So that is of type modifier. Make sure to import this from Compose UI. And I will set this by default to a default empty modifier like this. And then we can open curly brackets. So if we want to make such a card here with rounded corners, with a shadow, then the easiest way is to just create a card component here in Jetpack Compose. That is very similar to the card we also had in XML. So let's choose that. In here, we want to pass some options. On the one hand, I want to apply a modifier. Modifier is equal to, and now I'm going to choose the modifier here we pass as a parameter. So we can apply a modifier to this card that we pass from the outside. And if we didn't pass one, it will just choose this empty default modifier here. Dot fill max width actually. So I just want to fill the maximum width here for that card. Then we can set a shape to the card to give it rounded corners. So we can set that to rounded corner shape. And here we can just set the corner radius to some kind of DP amount. I'll just choose 15 dp here, import dp, pressing Alt plus Enter. And I want to set the elevation of that card to some amount of dp. So that will just give it a little shadow. I'll set it to 5 dp here. And now if we take a look in our layout, 
then you might think now, okay, how can we do this? Because these single composables are actually stacked on top of each other. So the text is displaying on top of our image and the gradient is displaying on top of our image as well. And in the past few videos, you have learned about rows and columns, but these are not really helpful here because we don't want to display content on top of each other or next to each other. Instead, we want to stack the content. And whenever you want to stack content and also align it, so also, for example, set this text alignment to the bottom here, bottom right, uh, bottom left actually, then we want to use what is called um, a box. So a box is just as a column and a row, um, a normal container, we can put composables into that and just apply a modifier. And then inside of that box, each item we put in into that is going to be stacked on top of each other, but we can also align these items. So that is very helpful. Here for the box, I want to set the size to actually modify with a capital M here, just use a new modifier and set the height to 200 dp. Then we can open curly brackets. And now whatever we put into this block here will be stacked on top of each other. So in Composite is actually like whatever we put first here in our code will be at the bottom of our stack. So since our image should be at the bottom of our stack, then we actually want to have the gradient, which is above the image, but below the text. And then we want to have the text. Um, since that's the case, we want to first have our image in, in the box, then we want to have the gradient, and then we want to have the text. So for the image, we just have an image component here, and that takes the painter we actually passed as a parameter. And it also takes the content description we also passed as a parameter. And to actually crop our image a little so that it fills our container, we want to set the content scale property or parameter here to, oops, what am I doing? To content scale dot crop here, this one. So that is equivalent to center crop if you know that from XML. And then, as I said, the next thing is our gradient, but because that is a little bit more complex, I want to start with the text that should display here. And if we do it like this, we couldn't actually align the text individually in our box because we want to align the text to the bottom left corner here, but we only want to align this text. We don't want to align any, everything else. We just want to align the text so what we do is we create another box and we just put the text inside of that box. So another box here, I'll set the modifier to modifier.fill max size. So it will just fill the max size of its parent container, which is this, mod, uh, this box here. And then we also want to give it some padding. I'll give it 12 dp. So it's not completely at the bottom. And we want to set, if you press Control P here, we can see the parameters, content alignment. Um, that is another way of aligning items, which is used for boxes. You have learned that already for rows and columns, but this one works differently. If we use this content alignment here, we can set it to alignment dot, uh, oops, alignment dot bottom start bottom center start you can see those are different values as we had for rows and columns because here in a box we don't have this main axis and cross axis instead we can just align our content in the top left corner in the top right corner in the very center but we want to choose the bottom start here and it's actually a little weird why is it telling me it doesn't know that do we have to open brackets yeah now it works let's do it like this um, and format this so that it looks better and now inside of that box we can put our text and import that we want to give the text um, or we want to sign our title that we pass as a parameter and we want to make the text white so you can see we have tons of parameters we can choose for a text here 
we want to use the style here with which we can just style our text of course we want to set that to a text style and here we can <laughs> have even more properties that we can change and modify text but we just want to change on the one hand the color set that to color white set the font size to 16 SP this time. So we import SP here. If you're new to Android, SP is just a unit that should be preferred for font sizes because it scales with the user's font size preference, while DP units won't. So DP units should be used for every other kind of measurement and SP for font sizes. So all we accomplished with this, what we did so far is we placed our image here and on top of that image we put a box and in that box we have our text that should be the title for our image or image description whatever and because we use a box we can align this text to the bottom start and before we get to the gradient let's actually already um, use our card and just see how it works right now go to set content here um, that is always the entry point for our composables here we want to specify a painter so that is just used to get the image from our resources in our case we can do even more with painters but for our case we just want to have a painter resource here so that's super simple just pass our drawable resource id of kermit here in my case or whatever you chose then we can set the description of our image um, which i explained for the screen readers to commit in the snow for example and we can set the title of it to Kermit is playing in the snow let's also just choose playing here to stay consistent we could actually always just choose the same title for this for the description but doesn't matter here and then all we want to do is we want to create our image card composable here which is now reusable so every time you want to display such a card you just need to use this image card composable so that is the cool thing about composable uh, about jpeg compose and what makes it really st uh, scalable so for the painter we pass our painter then for the content description we pass our description and finally the title and then let's run our app and see how that looks like and you can see right now it stretches the whole width of our screen which I actually don't want here but you can see the text is hardly readable because it's white on white and that's the reason why I want to apply the gradient from black to transparent so that we can actually read uh, text on any image no matter which the no matter what the color of the image is but let's first fix that our card actually only fills half of our screens width we can easily accomplish that by putting it into a box and applying a modifier to that box dot fill max width but we only want to fill 50 percent of our width and then we put our card into that box and by the way let's also give it a little bit of padding here dot padding let's say 16 dp like this and uh, now we can finally get to our gradient so let's scroll down to our image card and that gradient should be put between our image and our text so right here that will also just be a box um, we don't need to put anything into that box but we will use a box just to be able to have something we can apply a modifier to and just give that modifier a background and that background will be our gradient so on the one hand we want to have a modifier here um, which I will set to fill max width oh no actually fill max size we want to fill the maximum size of our parent box and then we can apply our background property which we can not only use to apply a color here which we did in the previous videos we can also use a brush and with these brushes we can define a gradient for example so let's set the brush to brush dot vertical gradient you can see we have tons of gradients here we can choose from 
I'll choose vertical gradient because we want the gradient from the bottom to the top or from the top to the bottom, however you want to see it. And here for that vertical gradient, we want to choose this second option. We can define a list of colors. So for all the different colors we want to transition to and from, and we want to use the, this start Y parameter to make this gradient not start at the very top here, instead just down here. So we really have a very dark area here, but up here it's actually completely transparent. So let's first define our colors, which is just a list of colors. Um, here we want to make the gradient from the top to the bottom. So that is just how it works this way. Um, so we need to start with transparent, color dot transparent. And then we want to transition from transparent to black. And the start Y value, I will actually set that to 300F. You might think now, how do I get to 300F? I just experimented a little bit here with these values because there are ways to actually get the height of our box, but I don't want to cover these ways right now. So then we could just calculate that Y value depending on how high our parent box is actually. But for now, I'll just hard code it to something that works for us, um, but that won't make it responsive here. So if we leave it like that and actually launch our app, because that is actually already it, you can see that is how we want our car to look like. And I think that is actually pretty simple to do. And it's a lot more fun to do this kind of stuff in Kotlin and not in XML. So I really hope you liked this video. If so, then you should definitely check out my website in this video's description, where you will find premium Android courses, which will take your skills to the next level. And that's also a way how you can support me and my work. So if you like this video, just give it a like, leave a comment. And also if you have any questions, just put these into the comments so we can help each other learn. I wish you an excellent day and I hope I see you in the next video again. Bye bye.